How's it going, guys? So this might be strange, so I'm starting a vlog in darkness. And that's because I'm taking the night train tonight. So I'm just passing through Paris to get to the train station, but I wanted to highlight this behind me, Victor Hugo House. And here you can read it as well. Where is it? Right here. Maison de Victor Hugo, House of Victor Hugo. And basically, this is where he lived. So if you guys don't know, Victor Hugo was an extremely famous writer. And this is his house. And it's actually a free museum. So uh, unfortunately, it's not much you can see from outside. And of course, it's closed. But I definitely would like to go one day. And hopefully, I'll bring you guys along into the house of the famous writer, which is right where I'm standing. What's going on, guys? We're here in the city of Toulouse. I'm sorry about uh, my appearance. I haven't been able to brush up since the night. but. We are now in the city, and you can see I'm in this very lively street. I'm interested that, or I'm shocked rather, that there's no rails on the ground, so there's no tramway, as far as I can tell. Maybe there is some somewhere, but I haven't seen any. So yeah, I just bought like a baguette as my sort of breakfast, and I'm now heading to the tourist center to see what is up. But yeah, this is called the Alsace-Lorraine Avenue. And if you don't know Alsace-Lorraine, is one of the main departments along the eastern um, border with Germany. Don't ask me why this southern city has that name of a street, but that's the case. There's even a road called Strasbourg, which is a city that I've also been to, which is also in the east. All right, guys, so I got the shorts and t-shirt on because it's really hot, and I got my tourist map because I went to the tourist center. But check this out, we're in a big square, but I'm trying to get to a church right now, so I'll update you guys. And here we are, guys, behind the Tor church. So Toho means bull in French and this is basically kind of bull church from what I'm understanding and it's currently closed for restorations and you can see it's quite literally just built beside an apartment building which is interesting but I can't get inside. But anyways it seems like every year they would have a bull that would torture somebody that would get sacrificed at this church and then they were buried here. So I don't know if I got the story right but it's an interesting church. And it's built in the city. You can see you have that pink architecture because what this city is actually called is this pink city. That's its nickname because of the Spanish inspired pink bricks that are used all across the city. So uh, I'm gonna keep on going so I can get inside, but that's just a bit of some history. All right guys, so we're in the Basilica St. Serenin. And as you can see, the organs are currently playing. So that's very nice. It's not actually being played by somebody. It's just a reoccurring theme. But I'm gonna quickly tell you guys about this basilisk. So guys, I decided to do the filming outside since it's a bit too loud, I feel. One thing, it's crazy how much colder it is in the cathedral, which is quite a relief since it's actually quite hot outside. I'm not sure if it's air conditioned or if it's just the fact that there's pretty much no sunlight that can get in, but either way, it's nice in there. And there you can see the spire. I just wanted to highlight that before we get started. So. Saint Serenin was built to honor a mater saint. So this actually has to do with the other church I just showed you guys, the Church of the Tar, which was built in the 13th to 14th century. So I was actually mistaken and I will correct myself now. He was the first bishop of Toulouse, so the city where I'm in, and he was in the third century, the half of the, so 250 is when he died, and that's when he was kind of alive in the third century. And he died after being dragged through the streets by a sacrificial bull in front of the Forum Temple and in front of that church. So the Church of Notre Dame of the Tar. And actually, I'm, in, I'm incorrect. So that church that we just saw before commemorates the fact that he sacrificed himself because it's literally called the Church of Our Mother, the Bull. And basically, he became a very important person because all of the pilgrims came here because of his sacrifice. And that's why they built this massive basilica because they needed room for all of the pilgrims who made their way to Toulouse for that pilgrimage. So with that being said, this is actually the biggest Romanesque church in the world. Don't quiz me on what uh, the definition of a Romanesque church is but I can at least give you guys the dimensions. So 150 meters by 64 meters wide. And um, I might show you guys a few other features. And the spire that you see there is 65 meters in height. So I imagine that that means that from the base to the height, to the top, it's 65 meters. So um, if you add that, you get 
150 meters in total. So the actual building then must be 50 meters in height, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna show you guys quickly a bit more of the church from the inside, but that's kind of the rundown. I just read this off the book, so don't think that I'm very knowledgeable and let's go back inside. So the organ stuff for a second, I'll take advantage to show you. We have a beautiful carpet kind of decoration on each column. And then here is the actual pilth or praying stage. I can't get you guys a good look and I'll show you the last part that's interesting. So here behind me you have where the procession occurs and you can look, you have a very high quality red granite here, I believe. But yeah, that's essentially where all of the clergy stands. And now I'm in the back section of this church. You can see hanging from the ceiling, you have a replica of the church from what it seems. And then if we go down, there's a kind of a labyrinth here. So I'm now descending below ground level. And I'll show you guys what we have here. So it's kind of, I believe, the site where somebody is buried. It might be the same guy who got dragged to death by the bull, but I'm not certain. And it keeps on going down. So I'm literally standing underneath where the procession occurs, where the um, mass occurs. And you can see we have here a column. Apparently, this is where people pray. They stand in that gravel and they hold the column. If anybody knows what the meaning of that prayer is, but essentially before when I came down here, there are two people, they're each holding the pillar and standing in the gravel praying, presumably. So yeah, this is just the underground section. It of course has many different displays and different areas where you can pray, of course, because this is a basilica. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. So guys, we're here in the Museum of Architecture in Toulouse, which is quite interesting. I'm on the first floor, which is about Roman exhibits. So basically, it goes from chronological order, oldest down to the bottom, the lowest floor is Crescent Day, I think. And if you remember the Marseille vlog from last week or two weeks ago, you had all of those different colors of what I was talking about, which one each represents. And here you have the same thing. So I'll quickly read for you guys kind of the different dyes in which each one represented. So um, they were mostly mineral origin, but sometimes vegetable or animal as well. And that's what we'll get into. So the most ones we, that were often used were chalk or lime, which is a mineral, of course. That was white or green, the colors that they obtained from that. And then they would use suit and coal for black. So that's the most common colors. Then you also had, with respect to the precious ones for the elite, Aragonite, which was a white pigment used from crushing shell corals. So small corals and marine fossils were crushed to get this pure white. Vermilion, which was a red color that becomes darker over time. And a different one called chrysolica, which is a very expensive blue-green pigment. And uh, yeah, so basically the more extravagant the color, the higher the status it would exhibit. And here you have the examples right there. So here on this floor, you can see we have a massive number of busts, mostly of, it seems, Roman men. So basically you had one here that was Marcus Borio, and it's right here. So if you look closely, it says Mark Ori Aurel. And that made me think of Marcus Aureolus, one of the most famous Roman empires, Roman emperors, but that's not him because Unless the French spelling is different. Let's see. I don't think so. I think that is just a different person. Oh no. Okay, this is Marcus Aureolus. Because if you look here at the English spelling, you have Marcus Aureolus. So that's really cool to see. It's actually my favorite Roman Empire. Emperor because of his book Meditations. And uh, yeah, so never mind. I just found something new, which is that the French spelling is different. And yeah, so you just have a bunch of busts here. I actually have already been to this level. I accidentally came to this one first before the level that was above above. But yeah, you just have a bunch of Roman busts, so pretty cool. This one in particular, you can see it's colorful, so you have a, kind of a different type of marble there. So I just decided to read this, and you can notice that the head is a different marble used. And this is because during the time, during the imperial period, so I guess the time of the empire, it was much admired to use contrasting materials. So that's the explanation of why you have this type of marble here, with the actual head being a different type of stone. So here you have an extremely interesting sculpture or statue or remains of it, and it is called Hercules and the Golden Apple of Hebrides. 
So basically, apparently Hercules had a number of labors, and that was assigned to him by somebody, and the, one of them was ordered to bring back the golden apples from the Garden of Hes Hesperides. And so you can, here you can see those are the fruits there in his hand. And then actually the garden was guarded by a serpent. So he had to kill the serpent in order to get the apple. And actually if you look above here, just beside those leaves, you have the tip of an arrow right there. And that's apparently the arrow that was used to kill the serpent in order to get the apples in his hand. So it's quite an interesting thing. And even though the statue is almost completely destroyed, they still essentially retrieved the story from it, which I find incredibly interesting. So the last thing we'll highlight here is a kiln that was discovered in the 90s during a dig. And this type of kiln would be used to create lime. So in fact, the highest quality lime is apparently made from marble. So marble would be placed into the kiln all the way down there. And then over 10 days, it would be burnt with wood. And they would even put a layer of clay around the entire thing to make the temperature as hot as possible, 1000 degrees Celsius at the peak. And that would create lime from marble. And apparently lime was used for the building of buildings. So in fact, it's hypothesized that the basilica that we saw earlier, the Saint Saturn Basilica or Saint Serenit, this kiln might have been used to create some of the lime, lime that was used to make this basilica. So it's quite interesting that you have that there. And the marble you see all just across there was actually the same marble that was found in the kiln when it was discovered. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed the first video. Tune into the next one where I see the library, a chapelle, and many other interesting features such as the Garonne River. So definitely do not miss that.